So far we've looked at areas of basic shapes like squares, rectangles, triangles, uh, basically regular fundamental shapes. What if we're given a shape, for example, that's an irregular pol uh, polygon of sorts? What do we do about that? And these kind of situations do arise in reality. So for example, we could have an irregular uh, block of land, uh, say a park or even a, a property that the house is going to be built. Uh, and, and the land some irregular shape. The not all parcels of land um, are rectangular. What do we do about that? And how can we maybe break it up uh, in such a way that we can then find the area of that land? And one method that is done or that, that surveyors use is they use a method called an offset survey, sometimes called a, a, a traverse survey. And this is one method that surveyors use to measure the area of an irregular block of land. And I think this is best done by example. So rather than going through uh, copious amounts of theory, I think just looking at an example will be able to get through this uh, a lot quicker. So here's an example of a block of land. Okay. What the surveyor will do is they'll pick a diagonal. Okay. So usually it's the longest diagonal. So from A to H, there's a diagonal drawn. Now this line is called the traverse line. To traverse means to go across or to cut across. Kind of related to the word transversal in, in, in parallel lines, you know, the sort of line that cuts the, 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 the two parallel lines. So there's a, there's a traverse line and then offsets are drawn out, uh, perpendicular uh, offsets are drawn out from the traverse line to each of the vertices of this irregular uh, polygon. Then what the surveyor will do is that then they can see that the um, that irregular polygon is broken up into uh, triangles, um, trapeziums, perhaps rectangles and squares. And then it's just a matter of adding them up individually. Okay, So there's offsets, traverse line, measurements are in red and measurements are in meters. So let's do this as our first example. Okay, So all the vertices as well are labeled with uh, a letter. Okay, so what can we see here? We can see a triangle. There's another triangle there. There's also a large triangle. So just be mindful, um, while you could work this out as two separate triangles, it'll be a lot quicker if you just uh, treat it as one large triangle. So there's actually three triangles and a trapezium. So let's work out the first triangle. Okay, so maybe triangle ABC. Okay. And then what we do is that we list them all basically you know, organized, you know, sort of one under the other, work out the area of each shape and basically total, uh, take a total of the whole lot or add up the whole lot for a, a, a grand total and then we're done. Okay, so area, so ABC, we've got the base of 10 and we've got a height of 10. So area is equal to half base times height, so half 10 times 10, which is equal to 50, okay, 50 square meters. Okay. I'm going to do all the triangles first. So what about triangle uh, G, F, H? Okay. Again, area is equal to half base times height, half 11 times 12, which equals 66. Okay. We also have the large triangle, okay, which is H, D, A. Area is equal to half times base times height. So uh, what do we have there? So 11 plus 3 plus 5 plus 10. Then we have 29 times 17. So half times 29 times 17. And we get 246. Okay, 246.5. And lastly, we have the trapezium. Okay. Uh, trapezium BC FG. Okay, and it's the average of the parallel lines, if you recall. So 12 plus 10 over 2. And we're going to multiply that by the perpendicular height, which is. 3 plus 5, which is 8. Okay, so the average of 12 plus 10, uh, the average of 12 and 10 is 11. 11 times 8 is 88. 
So the total area, okay, we just add them up now. So we so 50, yep, yeah, so 50 plus 66 plus 246.5 plus 88, and we get 450.5. and it'll be in square uh, square meters. Okay. Let's have a look at another example. And this example is a little bit different in that the measurements are expressed a little bit differently. Now, by the way, this is what we call a field diagram. Okay, and I didn't mention that earlier, so I'll just make a note of that now. Okay, so this is what we call a field diagram. Okay, and there's another way we can express these measurements. Okay. Something called a notebook entry. Notice that, I mean, it's not a field diagram, but it actually represents the vertices of a field diagram. So in this example, we need to calculate the area of the block of land that's represented in this notebook entry. So we do call that a notebook entry, in fact, that, that's sort of a technical term for it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a, a field diagram from this and then from there um, work out the area by dividing the field diagram into triangles and, and the basic shapes. Okay, There's the traverse line, there are the offsets. Okay, So the traverse line is AB and we have some offsets, uh, for example, E, uh, D, C, for example. And um, so let's, uh, let's work this one out. Okay, so you may need to make your diagram fairly large. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw AB first. Okay. So that's our traverse line. Okay, and now the traverse line, the length of the traverse line is in fact 79 meters. So how we read a notebook entry, these are cumulative. So it's like a tape measure has been, um, been um, placed from A to B or stretched out from A to B and the surveyor at various points along the tape measure will go, ah, 35 meters from the start, so the start's always zero, 35 meters from the start, we're gonna go across 30 meters. Okay, so it's not the scale, but, so there's 35 meters, and that's to vertex E. Okay, actually that would be 30 meters, sorry, my mistake, and that's 35 meters there. So 35 meters up, sorry about that, 35 meters up and 30 meters across, we go to E. Okay. Now at the 49 meter mark, okay, we're going to go across 45 meters to D. Like so. Now, if that's 35, that's at the 35 meter mark. So starting from A, we go 35 meters. Now from 35 meters, to 49 meters, that's another 14 meters that we add on, isn't it? Okay, so this is what we need to be mindful that we are just, we need to basically convert these cumulative measurements into actual measurements between vertices, on, especially on the traverse line. So 35 plus 14 gives us the 49 meter mark, then we go across 45 meters to D. Okay. All right, now we're gonna to go to the 74 meter line. Okay, so 74 meters. I'm gonna go across 28 meters. To C. Okay. So from 49 meters, so this is at the 49 meter mark, at the to the 74 meter mark, that's another 25 meters. And then we uh, arrive at this vertex here, and then we go across 28 meters. Okay, and finally, from this vertex to the end of the traverse line, it's just an extra five meters. So I'm just going to draw in the five there, the, the measurement there. Okay, now let's draw up, now let's join the vertices of the of the polygon to the basically the, the perimeter of the polygon. Um, I'll try and do this as neatly as I can. Okay. 
something like that. Okay. Now, the final step now is to find the area of this uh, field diagram, so or, or the block of land represented with this by this field diagram. Okay, so this is our notebook entry. Okay, and is now it has now become a field diagram. Okay, that's our traverse line. There are the offsets. Okay, so let's work this out. Uh, I'm just going to add some more vertices here. So let's call that F, G, and H. So A, F, E. So triangle A, F, E. Okay, half base times height. So half times 35 times 30. Okay, half times 35 times 30 is 525. Okay, so that's that one done. Triangle CHB. Okay. Half times five times twenty-eight. Okay. That's seventy. Okay. Triangle ABD, the large triangle now. Right. Half times now what did we say it was? You can read it from the field diagram. Okay, it's seventy 79 meters times 45. Okay, just ran out of space there. So, actually, I'll just do that a little bit neater. Sorry about that. Uh, triangle ABD. Yeah, that's better. Half times 79 times 45. And that's one seven 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 point five. Okay, and lastly we have the uh, trapezium. Okay, which is E F H C. Okay, I like to underline some of these subtotals to make sure you know, I'm adding. I know which numbers to add. Okay, uh, and and be able to see them quickly. So E F H C. Again, area is equal to the, and these are, remember these are uh, perpendicular offsets, where the average of the parallel lines of the trapezium, so that's going to be 28 plus 30 over 2, and multiplied by the height of the trapezium. Okay, so you can read that from the offset, uh, sorry, from the notebook entry, from the offsets, so from offset C to offset E. So 74 minus 35, that's 39. Okay. Otherwise, you can just add 25 and 14, you get 39. Either way, that's the height. Okay. So let's work that one out. So in fact, it's pretty easy to see 28 plus 30 on 2 is going to be 29. So 29 times 39, we get 1131. Okay. Now, if we add up these four numbers in, in blue, so the total area okay, is equal to 525 5 plus 70. Okay, so I might just write these in 525 5 plus 70 plus 177.5 plus 1131 equals, and just add the last one, 1131. And we get three five zero three point five square meters.